here we have the sheep's head fish, which has disturbingly human-like teeth in multiple rows, Ew. which I have included in order to haunt your nightmares. A monstrosity. We're the bookends, people. Um, In-depth book review you never asked for. Episode three of this podcast. What are we doing? What's the book this week? It's Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. Spoiler alert. Uh, Spoiler alert. There's going to be spoilers. Um, We're going to spoil everything pretty much about this book. So if you haven't read it yet, probably want to read it first. Let's just move on to the the meat and potatoes stuff. Let's (laughs) get the PowerPoint slides out. My presentation is... Iron Teeth Witch Comparative Anatomy, Touch of Comparative Physiology, where I will compare unique Iron Teeth Witch features with other animal species. So the first thing that I thought was notable was the retractable iron teeth, which has three pretty distinct components. One, the retractable bit. Two, they're made of iron. And three, in order to have a retractable iron teeth, that means you have two full sets of teeth, which is kind of crazy. So... First example, we have the rabbit. The rabbit doesn't have a full set of secondary teeth, but they do have two sets of maxillary incisors. And the colomos incisor, also known as the peg tooth, is shown here. And it's where the mandibular incisors can um, contact with to help shred food. Another example of having multiple sets of teeth is like every shark ever. But they, while they do have rows and rows upon teeth, they don't really have that organized structure like we would expect in a humanoid um, in terms of the types of teeth and positioning. Here we have the sheep's head fish, which has disturbingly human-like teeth in multiple rows, Ew. which I have included in order to haunt your nightmares. A monstrosity. <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs> Next, uh, we have the sling jaw wrasse, which is my first example of an animal with retractable teeth. Um, now, they only have one set, and it's not their teeth that would retract, but actually their entire jaw, which is propulsed forward, and creates a tube-like structure that allows them to suck food in. That's pretty cool. Another animal with retractable teeth, a lot of people think of snakes and their fangs, um, more specifically the the viperids or the viper type snakes. Um, Vipers have, or snakes have evolved to have multiple of their skull, multiple bones that hold their teeth versus us humans, you know, it's just our maxilla that holds most of our teeth. But in vipers, the maxilla just holds the fang and it's also hinged at this, the maxilla here is shown in green. It's hinged at this prefrontal bone shown in orange and with a certain coordination of muscular movements in the opening of the jaw, that maxilla hinges forward and the fang comes out. Super cool. Um, It's also when it's not doing this covered by a mucosal flap, which you see here as they bite into their prey, that flap goes up and you can see the fang. Now here I think is the best example we have the moray eel, which has two complete sets of jaw. It has its oral jaw and its pharyngeal jaw. The pharyngeal jaw is shown here on this x-ray back here in the pharynx or the proximal throat, so the upper part of your throat, which is crazy. But here's a little video. They have a set of movable jaws in the back of their throats. <laughs> they attack their prey by biting with their oral jaws and then this second set of pharyngeal jaws is drawn forward, grabs the prey and then retracts taking it down the eel's gullet. This set of pharyngeal jaws has these terrifying sharp backwardly curved teeth so all crazy. over it. Oh my gosh. It's literally like alien. Oh it's the xenomorph. It's the xenomorph. <laughs> <laughs> and in case you know you're ever snorkeling and you're not sure, is this a moray eel? I have a nice song for you. <laughs> if they stalk on the reef and the steps of the <laughs> Oh, so great. Okay. Now, the last bit was to find an animal with iron teeth. I couldn't find any, but there is a certain species of bloodworm which has um, a copper based um, compound that makes up the majority of its proboscis. Which. Ew. Oh, it gets grosser. 
that's your weight. Teeth. Has metal teeth. Like a Bond villain. Like a Bond villain. <laughs> you got it. Yes. This. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next feature that I'd like to discuss is the retractable iron nails. Um, so most cats, except for the cheetah, which only has partially retractable nails, um, foxes, river day, um, have retractable nails, which is made possible by this dorsal elastic ligament shown in red here that connects the last bone or the distal phalanx of the digit to the second bone and that last bone holds the claw and so when you retract that ligament the claw comes in and goes out as shown in this video now while this makes a good analogy for retractable claws if you pictured it on a human it'd be kind of gross right like the, that last digit would like come in and out and their fingers when they didn't have their iron nails out would be like weirdly contracted so I found another species, oops, not again, okay, good. The Japanese Auton frog, which has a whole separate bone, like spur, that when the, the males use for defense or mating, they actually push the bone spur out through their skin. So the skin's closed and they open it up, like send it out and then attack, which I honestly thought was a great comparison for iron teeth, which is like, makes sense. Okay, and then the last feature is that they have their notable blue blood. So in most mammals, well, all mammals, the blood is red because they contain hemoglobin, this compound that binds the oxygen and carries it through the blood. And at the center of this hemoglobin unit is iron, which gives the blood its red color. Now in a lot of spiders, crustaceans, some mollusks, octopi, squid, they have a similar compound called hemocyanin, which serves the same function. It carries blood through the oxygen I said that backwards, carries oxygen through the blood, but the center of this compound is copper, which actually absorbs all light except for blue, it reflects blue, and that's why blood looks blue. Which actually makes sense for iron teeth, which is they, the lore says they have so much magic in them that they had to have iron teeth or iron nails, otherwise they would just evaporate from this plane and join with the universe or something weird like that. But when you compare the humans who have iron in their blood, these witches don't have iron in their blood. They have copper. That makes sense why they would need iron elsewhere in order to ground them. So in conclusion, iron teeth witch anatomy. That is yeah. awesome. I was not picturing That's uh, the witches like this, but now I really understand what they look like. Very <laughs> weird. Very strange features. So, Katie, when the witches were doing their big competition to determine who was going to be the wing leader, you could say it was a squid game. <laughs> Did you have that prepared? Did you see her presentation beforehand? Michael, those these things come effortlessly. <laughs> Michael he doesn't have to can these kind of puns and whatnot. He they just come to him. Yep. If anyone has any of their own details, share with us. We'll post them. Subscribe to us on YouTube, <laughs> like, and subscribe.